This is a $20 PCI Express Wi-Fi adapter. And this is an $80 PCI Express Wi-Fi adapter. And in this video, we are going to throw both of these into that computer, download my testing suite, which is about 420 gigs, run some other, you know, run some other tests and compare them to see if you really need to spend the extra money and get the Wi-Fi network adapter that costs four times as much. But before that, we're going to look at them both individually and then compare the two. All right, so let's start with the cheaper model because we want to give this a chance. This is a TP-Link TLWN881ND. It comes with a two-year warranty. And yeah, that's about all there is. It boasts superior connection and 300 megabit per second download speeds or transfer speeds, I guess. So what do we get on the inside of the box? When we open it up, we have a low profile adapter. We have the network adapter itself and it's both of its antennas. So that'll be pretty useful, but the network adapter itself, it doesn't actually have a heat sink on it. And that heat sink might prove to be rather useful, especially for hotter environments like smaller, more budget oriented cases. We have a CD driver disc, which, okay, nobody needs that anymore. And we have a installation guide in case you don't know what to do. The big takeaway on this installation guide is, where is it? Right there, the TP-Link website to download the real drivers. So let's get this guy thrown into the PC and test it up and see what it does. All right, and here we have the more expensive $80 Wi-Fi network adapter. And one of the big things with this ASUS PCE AXE 58BT is that BT and its exceedingly long product name stands for Bluetooth. So in addition to generally being significantly faster and more reliable than the TP-Link, and then the less expensive TP-Link, this also has more features. The big feature and the big selling point of this is Wi-Fi 6E support. And I do have a Wi-Fi 6 router, so we'll see how much that helps us. Now, what do we get inside of the box? When we first open up the box, we are presented with the network adapter itself. Take this guy out of his little bag. You'll notice that he has a nice beefy heat sink on it, a couple of antenna ports and a nice black PCB. Green PCBs are actually cheaper to print, if you didn't know that. We'll go here and remove the first layer of cardboard to reveal more stuff underneath. This is a, well, this, I'm not sure quite exactly what it does, but it connects the Wi-Fi network adapter to a USB port on your motherboard, I think. That is for the Bluetooth. And you have a significantly larger and more commanding antenna. And I think, yep, yeah, it guy is magnetic. So that is kind of nice. You also down here, you have a low profile adapter. So this will also fit in small form factor computer cases, which is going to be nice, especially with that nice beefy heat sink on it. If we remove the last layer of cardboard, we have warranty information, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, mostly just warranty information and a quick start guide. The quick start guide, again, the most important takeaway here, other than, I guess, setting up a home network, is where to go download the drivers that you're actually going to need. So let's get this guy thrown in the PC and see what it does. Now that both tests are done, let's unpack the results and talk about which card you should buy. I took an average of five speed tests and did this five times for both Wi-Fi cards. I also did that with Ethernet plugged directly from my router to my PC. All of the speed tests were done with the same machine and all of the wireless tests were done in the same spot. My internet plan is 600 meg down and 20 meg up. I obviously have cable internet. And that's important when comparing ping times because if you have fiber, you will have lower ping times because 
That's how fiber works, regardless of your speed, of your speed plan. So for the speed tests, the Ethernet averaged 720 meg down, 24 meg up with a 10 millisecond ping. So not horrible, but we were limited by the internet I'm paying for. The TP-Link Wi-Fi card scored an average of 93 meg down with a 9 meg upload and 21 millisecond ping. While the ASUS AXE scored an average of 205 meg down, 24 meg up, and 11 millisecond ping. And I can read you numbers like that all day long, but what do they mean? Obviously, the Ethernet solution is, objectively speaking, the best. It is significantly cheaper than any offerings and significantly faster, especially considering the speed. The ASUS AXE is, in practical senses, just as good, while the TP-Link should be avoided if you intend to consistently do large file transfers, like downloading and updating large games. Let me elaborate. I ran a 360 meg download. After all the programs get unpacked, it's roughly 420 gigs. I put a 4 terabyte NVMe SSD into my rig to alleviate any issues with large download speeds on cheaper drives being constant stoppage of downloading because of cache filling up and to alleviate the potential bottleneck of your drive not being fast enough to keep up with your Wi-Fi network adapter. The TP-Link completed this test in 651 minutes, or just shy of 9 hours. And it's important to note that because the TP-Link doesn't have any proper cooling, and as the test went along for you know, anywhere after about the 4 hour mark, it progressively got slower. That's important because a lot of people now have very large Steam libraries, and if you're downloading Call of Duty Warzone, it's not far off of 380 gigs. I mean, you're closer to the 250 mark after you add the HD textures in there. The ASUS AXE card completed the same download test in 83 minutes, which is a fraction of the time, and kept its download speed the entire duration of the test. The Ethernet did the same and completed the test in 62 minutes. Again, even faster. So at the end of the day, which card should you buy? If you have cheaper drives, you might not honestly see the difference between the Wi-Fi cards and download tests, but if you have decent storage, the more expensive unit is significantly faster. More, t more than 4x speed gain for 4x the cost. There's also other features with the more expensive card. It has Bluetooth support for one, and a standalone Bluetooth card or adapter will often cost you roughly between $15 and $20 on the cheaper end. So if you do intend on adding Bluetooth to the mix, you're already halfway to the cost of the AXE from the TP-Link. This all boils down to if you have the money for and can use, get the more expensive card. It is absolutely worth it, especially if you can take advantage of it. If you don't have the money or are buying it for your grandpa's PC and all they do is browse Facebook and do emails, get the cheaper card. It'll still do those things you need it to, except Bluetooth. It won't really do that. I do just want to say as we end this video, if you guys enjoyed it or found it useful, please consider doing the comment liking and subscribing it greatly helps me get these videos out to more people so that we can help more people make better buying decisions and i do also just want to say thank you guys the channel has really gotten a lot more attention in the last few days than it normally gets we broke the 200 subscriber milestone and that's not a small deal for me i've been you know trying this whole youtube thing for you know, a number of years, different things have worked, different things haven't. And what we've got going right now is seeming to be working quite well, and we'll be doing this quite a lot. You know, new videos every Wednesday and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one.